Hello and welcome to a new video about hydraulics. This time we are going to talk about the piping. The piping between the pump and, and the working element. We had designed, dimensioning, we had selected a cylinder for working. So, okay, we need the force and so on. And then we selected the pump. Uh, then we selected, based on the pump, we selected the tank. And now we want to go from the pump to the cylinder. This we have to take into consideration because we guessed at the beginning, we guessed the pressure loss from the pump to the cylinder. We selected a pump according to a pressure level, uh, standard pressure level, and said, okay, at this flow, oil flow, I need to move the cylinder with a certain speed. I guess I have this and that uh, pressure, pressure losses. Of course, the pressure losses in the system depend on quite a lot of things. Yeah? Well, there are the viscosity of the liquid. Yeah? There is the flow speed of the liquid. There is the type of stream in which is somehow connecting those two things if it's laminar turbulent. Yeah? There is uh, the amount if there are orifices, uh, some other flow valves, valves yeah, inside. What type of valves or, or narrow passages and whatever are inside. Then uh, how long is a piping? Yeah? How long is it? How many direction changes I have in? How are these direction changes to look like? Do they have a sharp bend or are they gentle? Okay. Uh, so also, also how the piping are running through my system or through my installation, that's important. Okay. So the one thing we are looking at is mainly the pressure, pressure loss, because the pressure loss is then an expression of the friction, which is, which the, the liquid is experiencing in the pipes. Huh? If we are in standstill, there is no friction, internal friction, I have, have the big power, yeah? I have no, no pressure losses. I only have pressure losses if I'm moving something. Yeah? And then depends how fast I can move. So there is a simple trade-off. If it's working not that uh, easy, yeah? will move slower. We talked about this in a video about streaming valves, flow valves, flow regulating valves and so on. We talked about this. We also talked about piping. Let's just have a look. Yeah? So we said it's all about pressure loss. And we said the pressure loss in the piping, delta P, I can calculate this out of a friction coefficient. Yeah? multiplied by the density of the liquid and the streaming yeah? streaming velocity this was the formula yeah? this is the flow velocity this is the density and this here is the friction coefficient. And this friction coefficient, we said, depends a little bit on how this thing is formed. Yeah? So there's a, if there is a T-piece, we said the friction coefficient is around 1.3. Okay? If there is a gentle 90 degree gentle band, then it's around 0 0.5 to 1. Okay? If there is a 90 degree sharp edge, yeah, it's around 1.2. Yeah. If there's a double band 90 degree, we can reach uh, around 2. And valves, depending on the internal design of the valves, we are somewhere 5 to 15. Yeah. This is then written in the database. So these are my zeta values here. Yeah. Okay, now I have some pieces inside my tube. But I also said the length of the tube is important. The length of the tube is important and we talked about it also. There is the Reynolds number, RE, 
which can be calculated by the density, the velocity, the diameter of the tube, divided by the dynamic viscosity. And this is actually the same like the velocity multiplied by the diameter divided by the kinematic velocity. Ah, viscosity. Kinematic viscosity. Yeah. So D is the diameter of the tube. This here is the kinematic viscosity. This is meters, of course. This is square meters per second. Yeah. This V is the velocity. Again, the flow velocity in meter per second. Also here, by the way, I have not written it here. I should also write it here. Meter per second uh, density kilograms per cubic meter. Ah, uh, yeah, and this here, this was the dynamic viscosity, and here we have kilogram by meter and second. Mm. And this here is the density again. Density of the liquid, kilogram a cubic meter. Then there is the Reynolds number. And we said, yeah, we want to keep the Reynolds number under a certain value because then it's laminar. Yeah? And we also said, inside our piping system, we have laminar streaming. Yeah? Because if we have turbulent streaming, it's just not good because then I simply waste too much pressure in my system, in my line to where the pressure actually is needed. So we have laminar, and because we have laminar, we can, use, we can calculate the friction factor, this lambda, make it orange, lambda, yeah, is 64 divided by this Reynolds number here. Okay, so whatever comes out here, I put in here, then I have lambda, yeah. And from this lambda, I can calculate the zeta value of a piece of pipe. Yeah. And this is lambda multiplied by L divided by D. Yeah. If it's turbulent, this lambda needs to be read out of some diagram. I think you know this yeah, from, from your mechanics lessons, maybe. Yeah. And with this zeta value from my pipe, I can also add here. Yeah? So in the end, I have quite a lot of zeta values. I add all the pressure losses. I have a piece of tube that long, there is a certain pressure loss with this flow velocity. I have a piece of tube this long, this is a certain pressure loss. I have here a valve, there's a certain pressure loss. I have here some 90 degree bands, this is a certain pressure loss. Pa, pa, pa. And the pressure losses along the pipe are accumulating. And in the end, I do have, I do have a total pressure loss. And if this total pressure loss is less or maximum equal to what I thought, guessed in the beginning, I'm fine. Okay? If the pressure loss is higher than I estimated, ooh, I have to do a recalculation of my cylinder. Yeah? Then some iterative process is starting. Yeah? Easy, right? Well, uh, of course, all those things. We also said, depending on the pressure, if we are below a certain flow value, a flow speed, yeah, then we are in laminar streaming and then we can guess the pressure losses. So those limits were, if you remember, at a 50 bar system. Yeah, the flow velocity should be lower than 4 meter per second. Okay. If we have 100 bar system, 
the flow velocity shall be lower than 4.5 meter per second. If we have 150 bar, shall be lower than 5 meter per second. If we have 200 bar, shall be lower than 5.5 meter per second. And if we have 300 bar, there's the curve is flattened out here, should be lower than 6 meter per second. Okay, so these are rule of thumb method. Yeah? So then with this average flow velocity, I can already design the diameter of my tube. So I have the diameter here and I can calculate this Reynolds stuff and so on. Okay. Uh, suction line. Suction line. A right line. <laughs> if I want to write suck, it's well, 105 meter per second. Yeah? And the return line, we have 2 meter per second. Yeah? Because here is no pressure, shall be no pressure. Here is even below negative pressure. Yeah? So, now I have my hydraulic system actually. Yeah? I have my, I have my uh, tank, I have my pump, I have my piping, I have my... I can have to plan the way of the piping. And important, if I change the path of the piping because I realize, ooh, there is something in reality which was not in the plan because there is I don't know, a console mounted or I don't know, and I have to go around this console, yeah? then I really have to recalculate if this is enough. Or it's that much reserve that I say, yeah, come on. Yeah. This is always good planning. Yeah? There is always something happening on site. If this thing is erected, yeah? on the 3D planning, everything looks perfect. Yeah? And then in reality, suddenly there is a hole in the wall, which nobody saw before. Or suddenly there is a corner, or suddenly there is a console mounted, because some other company also used the space, and things happen. Yeah? So, always think about reserve. Yeah? If the calculated pressure loss is exactly the, the estimated one, Ooh, it's already pretty close. Yeah? It's a narrow path. Yeah? Then you really should be sure what you're doing. If you have a little bit of reserve, take one dimension bigger yeah? and use a flow regulating valve or flow flow valve, then yeah, you're on the safe side. I hope that's clear. So this is how we calculate a basic hydraulic system, or how we're dimensioning it. At least it's the path. There are details. Yeah. There are always details. And like always, if you go into details, it's really getting complicated. However, next time we still have something to do. Yeah. We are going to talk about pressure accumulators. Yeah. Set pressure accumulators can be used for different type of, of applications. Storage, uh, getting rid of pulsations or whatever. And depending on this, we can dimension in our pressure accumulators. This is the topic of the next video. Uh, we're going to talk about how we select an appropriate accumulator. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.